Hey guys, what's up? Today we're looking at solving another differential equation using separation of variables approach. And again, the separation of variables approach is to first separate the variables. You're going to need to do some algebra usually to separate the variables. The second step is to integrate both sides. On the left, you're going to integrate with whatever variables over there. On the right, you integrate with the other variable over there. Number three, don't forget to add a plus c on either side. I generally add it to the x side because that's our independent variable and that's how we're going to solve for c usually if we have an initial condition. But uh, it doesn't really matter what side you put the plus c on. Number four, um, again number four and number five are interchangeable. You could uh, solve for the constant first and usually actually that's easier is to solve for the constant using the initial condition if there is one. But um, you can solve for y as a function of x if you don't have an initial condition. So that's kind of the case here as well. So we're not going to solve for a constant of integration. Um, I may throw one in there just to see what happens, but um, we'll just say uh, we won't need that for this problem to be solved. So the first thing we're going to do is separate the variables. So what we're going to do is we're going to rewrite the differential equation dy dx as equal to and then use some algebra over here. That's just e to the 3x times e to the 2y. So I'm just using some algebra right there to kind of start to separate the variables from each other a little bit. Now what I can do is multiply by dx and divide by e to the 2y. So that's really e to the negative 2y dy equals e to the 3x dx. All right, so I separated the variables completely on the on the whoops on the left we have only y that should be a dy on the right we only have x so now we're good to integrate so integrate on both sides and on the left that we get negative one half e to the negative two y on the right we get one third e to the three x plus c. So put plus c right there. All right, so at this step, we, gotta put, we have a couple of options. And the way you may see the answer in different um, resources is you may see the answer like, I'll write it in blue as like an alternative answer. You could have a negative 3 e to the negative 2y equals, basically what you would do is multiply by negative 3 or sorry, multiply the whole equation by 3 and then multiply the whole equation by 2. So what you would get over here is a 2 e to the 3x plus, and technically this would be 2 and 3 multiplied by c, which would be 6 times constant. Well, that's still just a constant, so we just use a plus c there. Because it just c really just represents constant. So we just stick a c there even though it's really have been multiplied by 3 and by 2. So this is one way you could see the answer. Um, that's not how I'm going to leave it. I like to solve for y explicitly in terms of x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by negative 2, multiply both sides by negative 2 to get e to the negative 2y equals negative 2 thirds e to the 3x plus c. Now I'm going to take the natural log of both sides. So that'll give me negative 2y equals natural log of c minus 2 thirds e to the 3x. And then y can be explicitly in terms of x as negative 1 half natural log of c minus 2 thirds e to the 3x. And so that's our solution explicitly as a function of x. Whereas over here, this solution is an implicit solution. So this is an implicit solution. So this is implicit, and the one we found is explicit. Uh, generally, I like to get an explicit solution if possible, so, but not always possible. So I'll stick with the explicit solution as like the one that I really want, um, but you might see an implicit solution like this. Now, um, 
if we had a constant of an or sorry an initial condition what we could do is right here at this point plug in whatever x value probably zero plug in y value probably zero would be the easiest things to plug in then we get e to the zero which is one equals negative two-thirds plus c and I could solve for c being uh, let's see that'd be five-thirds so then I can have five-thirds minus two-thirds right here inside my natural log now I would need to restrict x values probably to be less than zero or something like that so this thing goes to zero and I just go to negative one-half natural log of five-thirds but that's all you know just just hand-waving because I don't actually have that initial condition but um, yeah, that's how we solve it using separation of variables.